Hey guys, how's it going? In this video, we're going to kick off the particles and waves part one topic by looking at electrical charge. So let's get going. Now, the first subtopic in the particles and waves part one topic is forces on charged particles. And we're going to start by recapping electrical charge from National 5 Physics, which is within this section called electric fields. So firstly, you should remember that electrical charge is a physical property of matter and is measured in coulombs, which we give the symbol capital C. You should also know there are two types of electrical charge, positive and negative, and we can look at how the different charges interact with each other. So we have the opposite charges attract each other. So if you've got a positive charge near a negative charge, then they will want to attract each other. But on the other hand, like charges repel each other. So if the charges are the same and they're near each other, they want to get away from each other. So if we have two positive charges near each other, they'll want to get away. And it's the same for two negative charges near each other. They also want to get away from each other. So to understand how charges interact, with each other, it's worth remembering that opposite charges attract and like charges repel. Moving on, it says here that charge can be either static, i.e. stationary, or moving. And we actually saw moving charges, i.e. electrons, when we looked at circuits within the electricity topic. Whereas in this section, we're more interested in charges building up on objects rather than moving in electrical circuits. So we're going to be looking more at static charge. Lastly, we've got some examples here which demonstrate electrostatic charge. So we've got things like charging a plastic rod by rubbing it with a cloth and using it to pick up pieces of paper or deflect a gentle stream of water from a tap. You could also rub a balloon on a jumper or your hair and stick it to your hair or a wall. And I'm just going to show you a quick simulation of this to help you understand how it works. So here we have a balloon with neutral charge and a jumper and we've also got a wall at the side. And what we can do is we can look at how the balloon is going to interact with the jumper and also with the wall. So if we bring this neutral balloon close to our jumper, you'll see it starts to build up lots of negative charge on the left hand side of the balloon. And that leaves behind a positive charge only on the jumper. So right now we've got a balloon which has a majority negative charge and a jumper which is positively charged. And we know that positive and negative charges will attract each other. So if I let this balloon go, it's going to be attracted towards the positively charged jumper. And we can also look at how the balloon is going to interact with this wall. So again, the balloon has a neutral charge right now and so does the wall. So if we bring the balloon close to the wall, you'll see nothing happens in terms of the charges interacting with each other. So if I let the balloon go, nothing's going to happen. Whereas if I go back to my jumper and build up a negative charge on the balloon again, then if I bring it close to the wall this time, you'll see that the negative charge is actually pushed away from the negative charge in the balloon. And that's because, remember, we know that like charges will repel each other. So the negative charge in the balloon is repelling the negative charge in the wall away. And that means if I let the balloon go close to the wall, it's actually going to stick to the wall. And that's because we've got the majority negative charge in the balloon now being attracted to the positive charge on the wall surface, which has been exposed here because of the negative charge that was repelled away from the balloon. So we've now got these positive charges in the wall attracting the negative charge on the balloon. And this is something you can try for yourself. So if you get a balloon, blow it up and then rub it on your jumper or your hair, then you'll build up a negative charge on that balloon surface. You can then get the balloon to make your hair stand up or stick it to a wall. Going back to the notes, another example demonstrating electrostatic charge would be a Van de Graaff generator, which can make your hair stand up and also create sparks to show you how lightning works. And we've also got laser printers and photocopiers and electrostatic charge is used to get the toner to stick to the paper. Lastly, car companies, car manufacturers and garages make use of electrostatic charge to ensure that spray guns paint cars evenly and it ensures that paint actually sticks to the metal surface of a car. I'll now just show you one last simulation which demonstrates another example of electrostatic charge. So here we've got John Travolta in a simulation called John Travoltage, and I'm showing you this to demonstrate another example of electrostatic charge buildup, which is electric shocks. Now, in the past, you might have given yourself an electric shock if you were wearing socks and you brushed your feet along the carpet and then touched a door handle. And this is what John Travolta is demonstrating for us here. So if we brush his foot along the carpet, you'll see he's building up lots of negative charge in his body. And that negative charge can then be discharged through his body by touching the door handle, and that's going to give you a shock. And that's because his body is touching the metal door handle, which is a conductor of electricity. So as the metal is a conductor, it's going to let the electrons or charge flow through it. So I'll just show you that again. That's all for this video, folks. Thanks for watching. If you made it to the end, I really appreciate it. Make sure to give the video a like, subscribe to the channel, and I'll see you in the next one. Take care.